Hi guys, uh, this is a quick demo just to show you guys how to get started um, for your acrylic project. It's, it's fairly simple. What you want to first start out doing is um, coating your surface with burnt sienna. Um, burnt sienna that you'll be using could be a mixture of reddish brown or, or an umber or even uh, burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of yellow. And you can kind of see my palette here. I got some colors squeezed out just to get, get ready for this. Um, so I got that down, I had it dry and ready to go. So the next thing I wanna do is use black to, to get my outline down. I'm doing, a, it's more or less of, of a cloud scene um, with, uh, with a, a highway and, and road, I was really interested in, in, in doing these clouds. So I'm gonna start with, with that. You can kind of see um, my black, a little bit of blue, and water. All you need really with acrylic is water. You, ideally, you wanna use um, also uh, mediums to go with it, but for, you know, for beginners, uh, you can start basically with water. Just try not to use as much as you do for watercolor. And this is one of the mediums I like to use. I add a little bit of this with the water. It kind of stretches it a bit, but you don't have to buy this. You can just use water if that's all you got. I just like to um, use the medium because it's a good bonding surface for the other colors. You know, when you're doing, um, you know, more permanent type works. Okay, so let's start out, you know, it's a little awkward for me um, standing, but I will now sit and all you'll see basically are my hands. So excuse the, uh, you know, the imagery. All right, so all I'm gonna do really is you just start, you even have to treat the clouds as shapes, all right? So the reason why I'm using black paint as opposed to pencils because with acrylic, as soon as you start painting and you're only using pencil to do your initial outline, all that detail will disappear and you don't know where your shapes are at. So I am going to begin with a very bold black outline of my landscape. And this is gonna be a little complicated because I got some cars on the road and I'm just gonna kind of rough those in. A little pickup um, and uh, get all the other details in as I as I go all right I like to start with black because it it, it takes a while before you can get rid of it uh, in the process the acrylic tends to cover up details almost immediately so you want to make sure that your outline for your subject matter sticks around for a while all right, um, it's a lot of details, but you know, basically, um, I don't expect you to, to capture everything that's in your photograph, but uh, what you can do is, is hint at the shapes, you know, hint at uh, the details, but still uh, try and keep it simple. I got a few telephone poles in the picture. Uh, hopefully you guys won't have to deal with as much linear perspective as what I'm doing right now. I got all these, you know, power lines and stuff that I got to take into consideration. So I'm just going to kind of rough those in. But yeah, someone's saying, why you outline clouds? And basically, uh, you, you could, you could uh, outline a, an iceberg if you had to paint with black because eventually it will it'll all disappear as you put the paint on. And acrylic, it dries, it tends to dry very, very quickly. So that's one of the differences between oils. Oils takes like six months to dry. This dries in seconds. And, um, but that's not to say that if you go into it while there's still pockets of the line work still wet, you're gonna get some, a little bit of muddying up of your colors. So, I'm not gonna worry about that because eventually even the mud um, can be cleaned up and covered up later on. All right, so trying to make these, trying to make my, uh, 
my telephone poles and my lines a little more believable. And, um, you know, all you need really is just a few brushes. Um, I basically start out with a medium size. Um, it's called a round because it, it's, um, it's pointed and has a round, what's called a ferrule. And I like to use that as, as long as possible before I switch up to my tiny brushes. So I use the tiny brushes towards the end. All right, so a few cars here, got a car in the distance, more cars in here and here. This is more of an early evening night scene, so um, I was really interested on the, on the, um, the car lights on the road. I wish, I wish this was a wet road scene. That would have been even better. But again, this is more in reference for the clouds and not so much. I'll show you the, the, the photo that I took afterwards. But just want to get this going. All right. Um, okay, we're good to go. Right now, I got the basic outline down. And uh, you want to kind of rinse off your brush. And what I do is I, I like to stick my brush when I'm not using it in, in another container that has just a little bit of water to cover the tip. All right, so now we're ready to get into the next set of colors. We've got our black outline on top of the brown. Now we're going to um, mix, mix the, the other colors, like sky. I'm gonna start with that. And as you can see, you got a little bit of sky blue here. And as soon as you put that down, I mean, it's immediately covering up the brown. Now, why, why am I putting brown down instead of just going basically straight into the white? And what the reason is, is because the brown uh, tends to hold everything together. And I'm kind of like, this is sort of the opposite of watercolor where you want to use a lot of white. Um, and putting the brown down kind of forces you to do that, forces you to get into the white right away. Because that's what I want you to do, is get used to it. Get used to using white. And you can also see what you cover up, you know. If, if you left it white and um, started painting your landscape, you know, you'll probably have a lot of the white canvas peeking through your strokes. So putting the brown down is, is kind of prevents that and it automatically tells you what you've covered and what you haven't. All right, so I'm working off my computer. Please excuse me. Um, um, I don't think you guys are gonna have this many blues, but you know, since I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Just work with what you can in the set that you get. This is called scumbling, by the way, when you go in different directions to uh, get your color down. All right, so there you go, look at that. Okay, so the next thing um, I wanna do is the clouds. Let's do the clouds. Okay, and my clouds are fairly light, more on the warm side. A little bit of orange in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start popping that down. I even see a little bit of pink. So I'll put some of that in there. And of course, the white's in there also. So there you go. All right, so we're not gonna finish this painting. I just wanna show you how to get started. And you know, you guys just, I'll just expect you to just dive into the process. Ooh, getting some of that black still wet. So when that happens, what I'll do is 
I'll just kind of leave it alone for a little bit and um, let that dry. Otherwise, it will just kind of mix up with you know, the rest of my colors and muddy them up. So I'm going to stay away from that. Get back to the blue. Um, got a little bit of purple going on. Let's see if I can work that in. here got my brush and now I'm gonna go back into putting some of that sky back down and you know you don't want to worry about your outline um, too much if you start to lose it you can go back in at another time and as long as you know where it's at you can just kind of reinstate those 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 lines <clears throat> but you know the clouds are fairly soft anyway so I'm not going to worry too much about losing them at this point I am getting rid of a lot of my line work in the telephone poles so I'm a little worried about that um, so what I'll do is I'll try to get paint up uh, to a lot of the line work. I won't completely paint them out. Just so I know that they're there. All right, you can see me painting in between the power lines. And that's looking a little funny at the top, right? So where the clouds are at, we'll get some of these and we'll just black out. You see how quickly the outline of the of the black goes away. Till eventually you got just some straight out, nice, beautiful clouds. Look at that. Okay. We'll get somewhere, guys. Alright. Um Okay, next I want, I have clouds down here by the way too, so I'm gonna uh, switch up to a smaller brush for that and uh, see if I can um, kind of hint at those clouds down there. So you can see how I'm mixing. Um, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna do a painting of clouds, it's just just as difficult as doing a regular landscape because the shapes are, you know, basically similar to a tree or anything else that you'd paint in a landscape. And I'm trying to mix in. I'm trying to make this as colorful as I can. So I will tend to exaggerate my color scheme, make it more interesting. I'm gonna go back up here, see if I can paint a little bit more of that muddy gray I had on earlier. Sometimes if you can't do that, it's probably, you're better off just taking a rag and seeing if you can lift some of it up like that and then go back into it with white, maybe a little bit of yellow to overpower it again. There you go. Yeah, this is more or less a sunset shot um, that I took. I shouldn't have been doing this, but I kind of took the shot I was <laughs> driving. Um, something I should never do but it was just a fleeting moment 
and I was stuck in traffic, so I figured I have a few seconds, right? And uh, decided to take the shot, but I don't recommend you guys doing that. It's not safe, taking shots while you're driving. A lot of this stuff that I'm doing, I can't, a lot of times I won't be able to verbalize it because I'm just uh, working intuitively on the piece. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, all this, this stuff that artists do is, is really um, elusive information. <laughs> you know, we just work, this is all we do, you know. We can't really give a speech on exactly how it was done. It just happens. So I'll do my best. I'll try to talk you through it. Um, and, and you know, your, your photograph, guys, is just a departure point. I don't expect you to make it look as exactly like your photograph. I just want you to use it as a reference, and then you could eventually depart from it, make it more interesting using your artistic license. All right, so here we are doing some clouds and they're looking good. All right. Okay, so, and you know, but clouds, what I love about clouds is the drama. You know, you get this dramatic um, effect of, of the shapes and, and the bellowing of the, of, the, of the clouds is just amazing. So I try to capture that when I, whenever I do clouds. I want you to feel what I feel, you know, as I'm doing them. And, you know, the hardest thing is just not to get carried away. After a while, you start making up stuff. And, okay. So, it's getting more interesting, I think. Right? Um, I'm kind of... Getting a, carry, a little carry away with my colors. But I think the point I'm trying, I'm trying to make is that you, you can budge a little and uh, change the, the appearance of your reference. Yeah, make it look better than your reference. Put a little bit of your own style and personality into the painting. You know, it's not gonna hurt. Won't hurt at all. Um, all right, so got something, some good things going on right now, and I uh, want to capitalize on other colors that we can get away with. A little um, peak in the clouds here that I kind of like. Let's see if I can. Translate that into some of these areas down here. There you go. And I kind of lost those nice clouds that I had down here, but I'm going to try and get them back in there. And by the way, sorry, I, I got my my iPad propped up on a, on some kind of holder. Um, it's not perfect. And you're probably only getting a fragment of the image. Uh, I wasn't able to prop the arm up so I can get a little bit further away from this painting. So what you guys are seeing is up close and personal. <laughs> All right. OK, so God, I might have to call this not a landscape. Call it a um, cloud painting. Sorry, guys. Okay, and oh boy, see what I just did? 
I just accidentally hit my red, and I don't know if I need that. Um, but orange I could use, and a little bit of that red. And the reason why is the cloud has some really interesting um, brighter colors like in here. Let's see if I can pop some of that in. Not too much. A little tacky. And then back to my pinks. All right. Um, so wow, there you go. You got a very uh, what we call an impressionistic cloud, and uh, I got to balance that out with um, my light. Wispiness here, um, very uh, challenging to do it with acrylic, by the way. So I'll just do my best. more shadow in the center part of the cloud. Okay, all right, so there you go. That's the sky for you. All right, so the green, uh, I got some green at the bottom, and what I'm gonna do now is see if I can put some of that down. Okay, mix that up. And it's a very unusual grain. It's, it's very dark, it's early evening. So what I wanna do is see if I can mix that with browns, greens, and blues to give it that timeline of what the vegetation is at that time. So I'll put some green in, more of a darker green. Okay, and no, it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of lighter uh, green where you think it is. detail down here. Um, I got things going on on the side of the road here that I'm trying to separate from. Alright, I'm going to rough in the car. Got a pickup truck here. And it's not going to be pretty. But, 
Okay. So, tell I'm not an engineer. Bomb bomb. All right. Uh, hint at another one here. There's another one here. Another one here. So these are cars, believe it or not, guys. Um, and that will do it for today, okay? So I just wanted to do a sort of part one video of these for you guys to look at and how to get started um, for the initial beginning stages of your acrylic painting for the first time, all right? Okay, so. And you notice I'm slowly, um, finally painting out the brown. Eventually the brown will, will be completely covered up if you do it right. And um, you can go back in and uh, redefine your, your line work on the, the details and focal points and components in your landscape. So this is just kind of initially give you an idea of how to get started, all right? Um, the importance of the brown as a middle tone to go light and dark from. Um, I will just kind of basically put down, oops. Okay, so this will be a very raw version of the painting. And we'll conclude that for now. And I will get this posted to you so that you guys can see how to get started on your landscape. All right. Thank you for watching.